Hello everyone! Today I would like to show you some tips and tricks for using some of Visme's amazing productivity features that could help you be more efficient, organized and keep all your graphics on brand. I will also cover how you can save some time by reusing and repurposing content and which formats to use when exporting your final project depending on your needs. So let's dive into it! It's always a good idea to make sure all your projects are named appropriately so you can easily search them later from the search bar in the upper right corner. To rename any of your projects, just click on the hamburger menu and hit rename. Type in the new title and hit continue. You can also change the name of a project from within the editor by clicking on its title on the top menu bar. To organize your dashboard, you can group your projects into folders. If folders have been shared with you already by your teammates, you can see them on the left sidebar, but you can also create new ones by clicking on the plus button. To add a project to a folder, simply drag the project from the dashboard onto the folder. To remove it from the folder, drag it back to all projects on the sidebar. If you create a new project from within the folder, it will automatically be part of the folder. A folder can also be part of another folder, so you can simply just drag it onto it and have multiple layers of folders. To remove it from within the folder, just drag it onto my folders. If you want to delete a folder, just click this little arrow and hit delete. It's important to know that when you delete a folder, it deletes its contents as well, so make sure you only do it if you really want to get rid of all the projects inside. From within this menu, you can also rename your folder, or if you're a part of a team plan, you can also share it with individuals or groups within your team. To keep all your graphics on brand, you can upload your own fonts, colors, logos, or even create branded templates for your team to use. Just click on My Brand from your dashboard. For this feature to appear, you need to have a team plan and within that team, only the administrator and designer will be able to edit it. To keep the type in your projects on brand, you can upload your own font so it will be available for all users in your team plan. Just click on the big plus button to upload your own fonts. You can set the header and body fonts and you can see a preview for it up here. If you go to the editor now and try to change the font of any text box, you will be able to see your own fonts uploaded. You can even restrict users under your team plan by only allowing them to use your own fonts. If you do that and reload your editor, now you will see that only your uploaded fonts are available. To upload your color palette, just click on Add New Palette and use hex codes to add your colors one by one. You can choose the colors by finding it on this wheel if you're not very particular, but if you have proper colors set up with your brand, then just copy paste the hex colors into this field. Now if you go to the editor and change the color of anything, you will see your brand colors appear in the bottom. You can also create multiple theme colors and add a bunch of them down here, which will also be visible within the editor under theme colors. You can see here my brand and these three are the ones that I've added. This can also be restricted just like the fonts. So if you do that, only white, black, transparent and your brand colors will be available for your users. And when you click on theme colors, only your branded themes will appear. You can also set the color of the background when you're previewing a project. So now it's set to black, but if I change it to this custom one, now I set it on white. If I reload this, the background will be white. You can also set up templates that your users will be able to see when they open a new project. To create a template, you have to create a project, or if you've created one already in your branded colors and theme, you can just search for it from here. And when you find the one you want, you just click add. Your templates will appear down here and Visme automatically knows which projects should appear in which category. Again, you can restrict your team to only be able to see your templates. If you want your team members to only create, let's say, presentations and infographics, but not printable stuff or any web graphics, you can turn those big features off. So when you open a new presentation, they will only see presentation and infographics and not the others, and they only see your branded templates. Under this tab, you can upload your logo. And what that does is that when you preview a presentation, instead of having the Visme logo up here, you can change it to your own. Just click on add your logo, upload a file, and you can even decide whether you want it on the left, center, or the right. Let's move it to the center, let's say. And then if I reload this preview, you can now see my logo up here and my presentation below. And last but not least, you can also set up all your company links in one place so that whenever you want to create a pop-up or a button, it will automatically suggest this for you. And then if you go into the editor and want to add a link to something, it will automatically suggest your website 
You can also do email address or social media here. This Mia's a built-in media library where all images, icons, and GIFs that you've ever uploaded to a project are stored in one convenient location. So if there are some images that you often use in your projects, like your logos or some icons, you can easily organize them here. When you add an image to your canvas, it is automatically uploaded into the library. Just click on My Files on the left toolbar to access it. If you plan to reuse the image, it's convenient to rename it and add some tags for easier searchability. Click on Edit and rename it to something more suitable. You can also add some labels up here, and when you search for a label, you can see all the relevant images. If you've used this image in several of your projects and you want to replace it, let's say this is an image of your office and you move to a new office and you want to replace it, you can just hit replace and that will replace it in all the projects that it's been inserted to. You could also organize your images in the media library by grouping them into folders. For that, simply drag any of the image into a folder like you would do with any projects on the dashboard. Another great efficiency enhancer feature in Visme is that you can save custom created blocks under my content. All you have to do is create a block of content that you want to reuse later, like this one for example, uh, that was created of a circle, an icon, and some text boxes. And you draw a rectangle around all the items you want to save, and then click save to my blocks in the upper left corner. If you click on basics on the left toolbar and then choose my content tab, you will be able to see all the content blocks you've saved before. All content blocks that you've created and saved here will be available in any project you create in the future and you can also share them with your teammates by clicking on this gear icon and share with the team. When your creation is ready to be shared with the world, it's important to know what format to go with. Clicking on share will give you three options. Publish for web and share privately are the way to go if you're planning to share your creation as a link. The main difference between the two of them is that if you publish it for the web, it will be publicly available and eventually people could find it through Google search. And if you share it privately, only people you give the link to will be able to see it and you can even make it password protected. Embedding is the way to go if you want your creation built into your website or some other place with all the interactivity and animation built into it. So that's sharing. The other way to go is to download your creation. There are a few ways to do that as well. If you plan to share your creation on social media, it's best to download it as a simple image. You can do JPEG or PNG, and you can also set it to be higher resolution. That will of course increase its quality, but it will also increase loading time, so be wary of that. If you need to print your project, it's best to download a PDF. If you're having it printed professionally, you should turn on bleed marks. This will basically just add little lines to show the area that needs to be trimmed off. Your downloaded PDF will preserve links embedded into your document, however, for any other interactive elements, you will need an HTML5. HTML5 will allow you to get a full interactive version if you have animations, pop-ups, or transitions in your presentation. It is the best format to use if you're presenting your presentation offline. It is also important to know that these downloadable formats don't work with our analytics features, but they do work if you share your creations through the sharing options. <laughs>